Okay, so first of all, um, my name is Marianne Harkin, and on my own behalf and on behalf of my colleague Brian McGuinness, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, this, uh, I was going to say this afternoon, and I had to think for a minute, it is afternoon at this stage, uh, this afternoon to this conference here in the Parliament. And today we're launching Volume 3 of the European Yearbook on Disability Law. Now, as I said, this is the third volume, and along with volumes one and two, I think we can begin to analyse the evolution of European disability law. And secondly, the evolution of European disability policy that affects people with a disability. And this, of course, is across a wide range of sectors, from employment, to housing, to anti-discrimination, to education, transport, etc. So in these volumes, in all three, we have literally at our fingertips an outline of emerging case law from both the European Court of Justice and the European Court of Human Rights. We can monitor developments taking place in treaty monitoring bodies of the Council of Europe, um, such as the Commission on the Prevention of Torture and the Framework Convention on the Protection of Minorities. And work from other relevant bodies in the field of disability is included, including the OECD and, of course, the relevant activities of civil society organisations that are active in this field, such as the European Disability Forum, the European Coalition for Community Living, and the Mental, Health, the Mental Disability Advocacy Group. Now, just very briefly, uh, some of the topics that have been covered in Volumes 1 and 2 include human rights and legal capacity, which of course is an ongoing issue and indeed will be mentioned this afternoon. The background to the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. The issue of multiple discriminations. Digital freedom for persons with disability, looking at the issues of e-accessibility and e-inclusion. Uh, removing accessibility barriers to telecommunications. A review of the Equal Treatment Directive, which unfortunately, as you all know, since blocked in Council. A uh, review of passenger rights, travelling by air, by sea, and the EU Disability Strategy from 2010 to 2020. So, today then, we are launching Volume 3 of this yearbook. And what it does really is it progresses many of those issues that I've mentioned already, that were already dealt with in Volumes 1 and 2. And it assesses the progress we have made, and it monitors change, and it monitors the impact of that change. So these three volumes, either individually or collectively, provide accessible and informative material on disability rights, disability policy, and disability law in the EU. So finally, uh, I would believe myself, having uh, looked at the three volumes, that they provide excellent tools for research, and for policymakers, indeed for all stakeholders, and for persons with disability themselves, and also for all of the civil society organisations. I think they're an invaluable resource to all the stakeholders because they assist us in understanding the evolution of EU disability policy and law. And that then, as legislators, allows us, in turn, an opportunity to assess the, the impacts of the changes that have come about and allows us to effect change as far as new policy directions are concerned. So as I said, we as politicians, as legislators, we need to be able to learn from our successes and our failures. And we need to use that learning to influence positive change. And as I said to Professor Gerard Quinn a few moments ago, in my view, these volumes should be required reading for everybody in the disability sector, and particularly those who wish to effect a positive change. So I'm now happy to hand over to uh, my colleague, Maureen McGuinness, who is hosting this event, and Maureen will introduce the speakers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marion, for a very forceful uh, opening statement, and indeed welcome to all of you here to the European Parliament. Um, we're both delighted to be involved in this very important event and to acknowledge uh, and launch the European Yearbook of Disability Law. Um, I was looking through it and I was 
joking as I tend to do and said, there are no pictures in this book. <laughs> and, and could I say that one of the issues we all face as policy makers is the volume of material that we are presented with and expected to read um, and don't read. And I think this is something that all lobby groups and interest groups, whether it's in environment or disability or agriculture, need to understand. This, in my view, is the, the benchmark and the guide to policy, definitely. But you need to be able to translate that into, um, I suppose, a story for action that takes it out of the hard covers and becomes um, not a simple message, because it's not a simple issue, but becomes a very clear message on a number of key areas that policymakers <coughs> can make progress on. Um, I know that the one area that I have put my, I don't have long nails, but if I had them, I would stick my nails into is this issue of um, deinstitutionalization. So that we don't spend European taxpayers' money building and maintaining large institutions. And we in particular don't use taxpayers' money to divide up big institutions into mini uh, institutions that are still part of a big structure. Um, and I will caution you on this. Change comes slowly. You know that above all. But it will come. On this issue, many years ago when I started on it, um, there was no interest or traction. The Commission were hearing, but there was no real response. And I'm quite positive now, after several years of sticking with the issue, that it is now being listened to as a real issue and will be respected that we do not use taxpayers' money in this way, which goes against the spirit of everything that this book, I dare say, contains and our overall position of equality um, for, of living um, for people and persons with disabilities. So, um, without further ado, it is a great pleasure to be here. I will not promise to read all of this, but I will put a challenge to you to, to actually put us in line with the key aspects that are in this book that we should take up uh, on your behalf. And if you do that, we certainly will do so. Uh, we have a video message which I think we can now play uh, from our good colleague Adam Kosa, who's president of the Disability Intergroup. Uh, he would like to be here physically, but he's certainly here in spirit, and if we now can listen to his message, we can get proceedings underway. Thank you. <laughs> 